Coming up on The Big Room. I have a just question about that, but we can get to it. About the commas or about why is it yeah, the movie called Yeah, about the commas. Because I thought it was crazy comma stupid love. Right. Which makes Which more would sense. Suggest, right, because so are we listing things? Is it crazy, stupid, and love? Because if it's crazy... If those are qualifiers of the love, it should just be crazy, comma, stupid love, right? Uh, There's six characters, so is one of the yeah. pairs of relationships crazy, one's stupid, and one's love? Is crazy, stupid love like the timeline of progression? Do we start out crazy, then we get stupid, then we end up with love? Or... Welcome back to the big room where this week Nick was late. How do you feel? Oh, oh my god! How do you feel about being late for the show? I was four minutes late. Late. It's That's late. ridiculous. It was the first time in Le podcast history, in our podcast history, where me, Daniel, and Carl <laughs> were all seated at the microphones before Nick got here. That has never happened. Normally, we're waiting on me. Yeah. To like and, prepare a stupid drink and waiting on <laughs> something that pushes us to like eight thirty. Well, last week we got pushed to like 9.30 because uh, my computer was on fire. You were having a time. With uh, issues <laughs> that I could not replicate today. So we're just kind of hoping everything works. I don't want to talk about uh, technical difficulties for the opening of two shows in a row. Oh, he dropped his phone. Oh, my God. Yes. Very early. Phone yes. drops. It's going to be a good very one. On, very on brand today. Oh, he can't even get it. <laughs> there it is. He got it's in that it. weird I had spot. A, I had a shower thought the other day. I want to okay. talk about it really fun. quick. Um, I, I want to know why there is seemingly a hard age line on boxed drinks. Why can't I have like a juice box full of like Cabernet? <laughs> I thought, well, yeah, there is. Like thing. Boxed there's boxed wine, yeah. wine. Well, boxed wine is large. I want a also, juice box. Capri Suns are good. Well, that's a pouch, which same, but yeah. it's the same a, category. A box is the perfect stacking shape though. Can you can, imagine? It's yeah. round. It doesn't have the same amount of liquid per space. A box is mm. full. All the edges you get filled. Yeah, but I, I think I think cans are can shaped because the cylinder is like quite strong actually as a mm. shape. Oh, um, you can make a cylinder stronger easier than. Look, for example, that's why the Romans did arches. It's easier to reinforce an arch because it braces against itself rather than mm. having to make like corners really strong. I think <laughs> architects Nerd. tell me how stupid I am. <laughs> but. So we should drink it. Why is boxed water good? Because that's a thing. Okay, I know boxed water is good. My, this came from, I saw a commercial of like, it was like one of those, uh, oh, your kid's growing up, probably a Publix commercial. And the kid had a juice box, and I was like, imagine walking <laughs> into, a, into a bar and going, I'll have a cab, and they hand you a box, and it's got <laughs> a straw, and you stab it. It'd be great. So what I thought you meant is uh, why I don't know, am I not drinking juicy juice as an adult? Like, why do we just stop <laughs> drinking juice? I'm That's not, also valid. Not like, you know, I want yeah. adult drinks in boxes. Like, yeah. why am I not drinking box with, juice? Why have we abandoned the box <laughs> container? Why, why, yeah, mm. why? You mean you can still have juice, just not without, like, I haven't had juice since I was in sixth grade. Juice is great. I mean, it's full of sugar. Because can't have the box. I haven't had juice in roughly eight hours. No, that's not true. I had orange juice. I though. feel like orange juice is an exception. Well, yeah, because we put booze in it and we call it a <laughs> screwdriver that's or for a mimosa. But like, <laughs> start the day off with some poison. Yeah. <laughs> you love waking up, rubbing your eyes, and getting a screwdriver. Nothing mm. wakes you up in the morning I, I like don't vodka. Love that. I love it. It's weird that coffee. we give boxes to kids though who are working on their motor skills and it's not very ergonomically yeah. shaped but maybe that's the point is to i train think it's easier it. to hold a box than it is maybe a cylinder is. right yeah but you're giving a kid that has no fine motor <laughs> skills something that is easily grippable know, squeezable you're... like juice is yeah just... right they're just gonna uh, yeah it's true it's like that toddler strength and you're giving them a juice i guess box. it's the barrier to entry with opening a can but they're, they're not even poking well, the pouches themselves either. We're really getting the in the thing, weeds here. The other thing, too, is like you can't give this a toddler... This is that sunglasses headband all over again. Yeah, you can't give a toddler a juice box made of like titanium because that's quite heavy. Yeah, and then it's a weapon. That's true, yeah. It's they can sling cut it, themselves. Like you're in the back of a van and you throw a titanium cube. Your whole the, windshield shatters. This is the cube. stupidest... No, it's a valid... Why, conversation ever. Why don't they put things in boxes? I don't know. I want more box stuff. Well, I mean... It's probably not recyclable. Really like, a I, can well, yeah. is much more recyclable than a box that's been wet. And cans still have uh, thin plastic linings on the inside. Mm. F, why? So it doesn't corrode the... Okay. <laughs> F, why? Just the letters. <laughs> I just want to drink things out of... You know what really needs to come back? <laughs> F, why? I just got that. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to say Sobe needs to come back? No, oh. glass. Oh, okay. Glass. I'm here for glass. Like glass. glass. Yeah. It's great because like it's, people used to take the bottles back and they just refill them. Not only that, when you mm. litter, it's like well, in fifty years that'll be sand. Who cares? 
Yeah, but then the price is going to go up for glass. I would pay more for glass. And now I don't because I get canned Miller Lite because it's cheaper <laughs> than the glass bottle. So maybe I'm a jackass. Um, <laughs> maybe. We watched a movie. That's what this is about. Actually, we have a movie podcast, not a solving the world's drink or creating new drink problems. <laughs> 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 we watched uh, our third and final for the month because the month is over. For the month. Definitely not final. Ryan Gosling film. Mm. Crazy comma stupid comma love. Which is annoying. Which is I, annoying. Yeah, I have a which is question about that, but we can get to it. About the commas or about why is it yeah, the movie about called the commas. this? Yeah. Well, just the commas. Because I thought it was crazy comma stupid love. Right. Which makes which more sense. Which would suggest, right, because so are we listing things? Is it crazy, stupid, and love? Because if it's crazy, if those are qualifiers of the love, it should just be crazy, comma, stupid love, right? Yes. Furthermore. We don't need that extra comma. No. Are we supposed to assign one of those attributes to one of three characters? That's what I'm doing in my head right like, now. Yeah, is this a good, six... the bad, and the ugly situation? Like, which one's which, Is then? one crazy? Well, yeah, yeah, there's six characters. So is one of the pairs yeah. of relationships crazy, one's stupid, and one's love? No, because they all end up with love at the end. Maybe it's they're all crazy. The babysitter and Robbie stupid are kind of crazy. Love. Is crazy stupid love like the timeline of progression? Do we start out crazy, then we get stupid, then we end up with love? Or is it? Yeah, I like that. Is it Hannah the whole bloody and, affair. Is Hannah crazy, and Jacob and though, love? they're never really stupid. Those are the children. No, Hannah and Jacob are and Ryan Jacob. Gosling and Emma Stone. Thank you. Jacob mm. is Ryan Gosling. Mm. I don't think that that name suits him. Uh, Jacob? No. Yeah, I don't think so. It's very generic. It's yeah, yeah, it's very generic. It's Sorry, I'm not offended by Jacob's. it. I also don't think Cal it's, well, it's fits like, you know. Steve Carell very well. But how do you hmm. how do you assign a name to Ryan yeah. Gosling and Steve Carell or Emma Stone? Like this cast was great. Yeah. Twenty eleven oh, yeah. twenty eleven this film came out. This film is thirteen bloody years old. We're Ugh. dying. Um Ryan Gosling is ageless. He looks exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Yep. You said you said you think he's had work he's, done. Oh, I mean, he's definitely he's, had work done. Yeah. No, his surgeon's good though. If you look at <laughs> yeah. his cheek, are you it's kidding? Subtle stuff. It's yeah, they're kind I of. I never thought about it, but now that I think about it, his cheeks were real full in Barbie. I feel like they've yeah. come down a little bit. That could also well, he was supposed been, to be like, a doll. M- yeah, he no, but it like, wasn't to make him ju- plastic. He got extra. Bones. Maybe no. it was a serendipitous. <laughs> I think maybe he did. <laughs> Because even in Fall Guy, he's still a little. He's just a little puffier. Yeah, smooth. I don't know. Smooth. Like, you, you know, be, he looks a little different. Got that Simon Cow cheekbone. You don't be 42 Ooh, and not, not have bad. forehead wrinkles. <clears throat> yeah. I have forehead wrinkles because all I do is live my life one frown at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And it's you frown true. with your forehead. I frown with my forehead. Mm. It takes more <clears throat> muscles to frown than it does a smile, which just means I'm working harder than you. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought, like, with your mouth, though, like, that's going up is way more work than just real relaxed, like. Yeah, but that's not a frown. Yeah, nobody We're actually like frowns heart. though. No. Like, I do when I'm doing that's a thing. Like, <laughs> nobody does that when they're mad. Yeah, I don't know that my mouth ever goes down. <laughs> Why? <Wow. Like, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. This, this is a question. Is a rom com? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a rom com. But it doesn't quite feel like a regular rom com. It feels a little different, it, and it I don't really know how to qualify it. Like it feels like an updated rom com, maybe. It like feels, a neo rom com. I feel like it was heavier on com than I expected. Yeah, it, it feels almost like Kevin James movie, Adam Sandler movie. I get yeah. that same kind mm. of like feeling in my body when I'm watching mm. that. Like you know that, like you turn this movie on and you feel. I feel more similarly to like the way I feel when I'm watching. Uh, anger management with Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholas. Then I feel like watching You've Got Mail, for example. Yeah. It feels mm. more of that mid two thousands, early two thousands stupid comedy, uh, which it's like seven years late to the party for, which is cool. Uh, but it doesn't feel like The Big Sick or You've Got Mail, like I said, or Love Actually or any of these rom coms from I guess the nineties. Maybe it's just an era thing. Maybe. Yeah, or just a different. I mean, it's. I feel like it's kind of an in between. I would love to know the point. delineation point from when the when '90s you... movies stopped feeling '90s and movies started feeling like Paul Blart Mall Cop. I feel like it's post like 2005, because <laughs> like yeah, there's like <laughs> the delineations 9/11. I was, I was about <laughs> well, to say. Honestly, it might be. <laughs> the towers fell and movies the started changed us all. Yeah. <laughs> like how to lose a guy in ten days. Oh man, is very like of the nineties. 
Yeah. Feel what to was up me. the 90s? I missed it. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Okay. We haven't watched it. There's that. a few rom coms that hit that. that like 2002, 2003. Mm. But I feel like once you get into like The Proposal, Something Borrowed, this movie, I feel like we're, we've then crossed, oh, the crossed over. I bet The Proposal is mm. actually a bad movie, but I love it. I feel like it's a movie people like, though, oh even if God. it's not like quote unquote it's entertaining good. For sure. it's yeah. Love Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. I'm the only one who haven't, hasn't seen it. Pro- Carl, you've seen the proposal. Mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds, yeah, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock is a hell of a pairing. Yeah. It works, but it's kind of weird because you're it like. It seems weird. You're the mom from the blind side. <laughs> you're dead. No, she's so much more than that. <laughs> you but, will be Deadpool. You know. Well, yeah, but I guess that's the first movie with Sandra Bullock in it that I saw, which is bad. Sandra Bullock is, was an icon. She's still an she icon. She still is, yeah. But, yeah. Um,. I had a thought. Oh, she was. Oh, you're good. Well, no, I learned like two days ago because I'm an idiot that Ryan Gosling is also Canadian. Both of the beloved Ryans yeah. are not of the U.S. That's crazy. I was going to me. say, like in this movie, he's kind of like the all-American dude, and I was like, God, that's so funny because he's not American at all. <laughs> like, he's also, like... <laughs> he's also a very, very cool and and very cool blend without being. I don't think insulting to either. Um end of the spectrum of both like strong muscly masculine i look great with my shirt off but then semi camp like he does the the hand thing with the wallet and then the, mm. the hand over the mouth <laughs> yeah, the hand over dude, the mouth yeah. giggle at the end it's like oh he's not mm. stereotypical tough guy like he's got um what would we say 10 years ago metro flair mm-hmm. <laughs> metro <laughs> he just i mean he's got the man rings and his neck mm. the little chain necklace like he's, he yeah. dresses in he's like styling. very smart suits mm. Oh man, man's the like in this dressed movie. to the nines in Vivian Westwood. He's he looks yeah. great. This movie's like what thirteen years old, but yeah. I feel like the fashion. Well, certain pieces feel like very two thousand eleven, but I mean like a lot of it. Some of it's the son's recreational, oh like God. black t shirts with like they're very fitted black shirts with the chains. I was like that was very early. Uh, That's very but early. I think the were timeless. Cal Steve Carell's characters style before right that was yeah. very early 2000s, 2000s. dad yeah. Yeah. where oh, and then i'd say the women the wear, new balance the women wear has aged more so than the, the men's heels wear. they were wearing i was like mm, the haircuts the haircuts bangs. The bangs. Um, bangs are out again apparently but like i didn't Carl's, realize they had come back in i don't know like carl said though <laughs> before we out. glossed over it suits are timeless yes and i think that mm. that suit Cut specifically. I mean, he's yeah, very a well tailored. tailored. A good tailored timeless. suit yeah. is always in style. There's no obnoxious <laughs> fat ties. Mm-hmm. Like we were, we were maturing in the 2010s. Yeah. But that's also like, what was I? 16 in 2010. Yeah, you had the, the sun's hair swoopy haircut. I did back mm. then. That's Dude, where my you were hair <laughs> still looks like shit. But it was really bad back then. Really bad. It was flippier. And because mm. it was flippy, I don't know, I, I would get sick of it before it got to like long, long, like universally long. I got mm. to that awkward ish stage and was just like, nope. And then I would get, <laughs> yeah. and I, you know, and then you go back to awkward. And then I'd go, well, I'd go really like tight. And I hate, I just hated haircuts because I'm, I'm so skinny that just when I had nothing up here, I don't know. Mm. Whatever. <laughs> Body dysmorphia is a hell of a thing. Mm. Just grow your hair long, get tattoos, and get over it. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I do love. Uh, so let's talk briefly about the plot because it is quite simple. I don't think we need to hammer on about the plot like this well, happened. Do some this happened but, good things underneath that simplicity, kind of like how La La Land did. Well, like, and visually. Well, I got more to talk about later, but essentially, yeah. the movie starts with Steve Carell's character Cal and his wife. What's her face? Emily. Emily. Emily? Thank you. I looked it up before this. <laughs> I didn't remember um, that. I had to look. Cal it up. and Emily. <laughs> Who's Emily's actress? Julianne Moore. Never. She was in the Big Lebowski. That. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, she was the painter. She was the painter. Topless on oh, the swing. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> Nick didn't see her face at all. Yeah. He just had no memory. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. Um, <laughs> so they're at a dinner. Is our pretty much our cold open, and they're trying mm. to figure out what dessert to get. And they like <laughs> on three, one, two, three. He says creme brulee. I want a she divorce. She says I want a divorce, <laughs> which is funny. Yikes! And it's like you know. Then he goes. He shuts down in the car and blah blah blah. It becomes, jumps out of the car. Jumps out of the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she had an affair. She cheated on him with Kevin Bacon. David Lynn Hagen. Uh, David Lynn Hagen. <laughs> Lynn Hagen. Lynn Hagen. No, Hagen. it's Hagen. Right? It is Hagen. No, right? but Hagen is the that's the one meme. That yeah, he, that's what yeah, everybody yeah. says. I, it's off. very great when like four of them are sitting on the wall. 
at the end, and then they all say Hagen or Hagen or whatever. It's great. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm confused. I don't know what his last name is. Kevin Bacon. Um, I was and that's ex- that's like the crux of it. She's like, basically, I haven't felt the spark in forever, so I boned this guy from my office, and then he's like, I'll give you, I'll sign whatever I want. Uh, just he stop just talking about it. Gives up. He's just like, yeah, all right, that- I'm out. That felt odd that he just kind of was like, all right, whatever, didn't fight at all. Like, but I guess we wouldn't have a movie without it. So yeah, and know. I I feel like that's a valid. There's probably like a, a a broad spectrum of reactions to news like that, and I feel like the more stereotypical male reaction is the yelling, screaming, punching, scary, loud, noisy, mm-hmm. domestic dispute. <laughs> Cops are called <laughs> craziness. So it's not kind very of, romantic comedy, right? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Then it's, we can't root for him. <laughs> like this movie's yeah. interesting because. There's a lot of problems, but I don't know if there are villains. Kevin yeah. Bacon. No, well, I was gonna say that Cal kind of. He's certainly do the a, closest. They do a tightrope walk with Cal because he's kind of a scumbag a little bit. Like he instead of like all that effort he goes and puts into like getting his clothes nice and all that and like meeting other women, he could have put some effort into like making it work with Emily, but he kind of doesn't even consider well, it. To his mind, I think is he went well. She slept with somebody else, so that's over. I think yeah, he just kind of mm-hmm. jumps to the conclusion the conclusion yeah. that she's now <laughs> wants to be with David, not him. He goes full defeatist, mm-hmm. yeah. which I think is yeah it's not an irrational no or. And then, you know, it's It like, just seems weird to have all that string of luck with the women and then not think... I guess he does later, but yeah, it just seemed like... Why well, not he does, and then it there? gets yeah. ruined because the yeah. teacher, lo and oh. behold... <laughs> Which I don't think she's a villain either, to be fair. No, no, I'll absolutely yeah. not. No. She has maybe the most animated reaction of anyone in the entire movie. It was to pretty, any pretty news. Pretty so yeah. That's not true. I, I love the... Yeah. Sh- well, she's an alcoholic. I'm five years sober, Oh... She's not talking about Robbie, is she? (laughs) So that's a whole thing. I think the, Mm. um, you know, if you're Cal, though, you're now in your 40s or whatever. You have three kids, as it turns out later in the film. I think that's the one of the coolest buried leads. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked that. But uh, I guess one of the things points I want to make in the no villains thing is there's not a lot of mudslinging. Mm mm. Um, it's the rare, like, sure, he goes out. Is mudslinging a term? I haven't heard that. Mudslinging? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like, they're not, like, they're... Define that. It's it's not the whole, I'm going, you're divorcing me, I'm not going (laughs) to ruin your life by slinging mud. I got you. you Being vindictive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few, like... Taking revenge. Like, mm. he doesn't... I, I don't think it is... Him sleeping with the, I guess it's nine women or whatever they say. I don't think he's doing that. I didn't perceive it. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I'm also a man, so maybe I'm (laughs) taking the man side uh, subconsciously, (laughs) not doing that on purpose. But it didn't seem like he did that to like jab at Emily. Like, you slept with one guy, I'll sleep with nine. That's what he said to her, too. It's like it was never about proving it to you or whatever, but. It's more of uh, like, it seemed like. He said he was trying to move on. It seemed like. Right. And lashing out with. I tried it once. That didn't work. I'm still thinking about her. I'll try the next one, then the next one, and the next one. It's like, it's like, what if a midlife crisis combined with uh, an actual marital crisis to mm-hmm. make this perfect storm of, um, I'm going to sleep with a million women and change how I dress and put a lot of effort into that um, after having the wake-up call of, oh, I didn't put enough effort into my marriage. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's an interesting plot. And I kind of yeah. took it, too, as like whenever Jacob... I just want to call them by their real names. When Jacob <laughs> told Cal, like, I'm going to be blown with you. You just got to do this if you want to move on. I'm sick of hearing you talk about this guy that she slept with. Like, I kind of took it. Everyone in the bars heard about Everyone in the bar on. knows. Yeah. Keep badgering everybody with this. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of took it as he didn't know how to move on. So he was just like, screw it. I'm just going to do oh, the yeah. only thing in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Um,. I like that Jacob's initial involvement is this dude's bumming me out at my bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's harsh and the vibe. The vibe. <laughs> he's, he's ruining my favorite drinking yeah. spot, so we've got to yeah, fix this guy. Hold on, fancy guy. face. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm God. so irritated that he's harshing my game yeah. that I'm going to fix this man. Is a really funny like motive. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's so tired yeah. of looking at this sad sack of shit on the other side of the bar. Like I've just got to fix him, or he won't go him. away. Yeah, it's one of the greatest motivators because 
Also, fancy face, I want to use that so bad, but I don't think I can use it without getting slapped. So. <laughs> also, like, <laughs> so, so his good. drink is a vodka cranberry, which is yeah. such a Steve Carell character drink. <laughs> and of course, like, um, <laughs> Jacob is drinking old fashions. Because of yeah. course he is. But if you notice... And making some great looking old fashions. But if you notice... If you looked at, there's one sweeping shot of the liquor shelf of the bar. Bar's in the <sighs> middle. It's a very modern, for the time, looking bar. Yeah. And it's a very vodka bar looking bar. Because the whiskey mm. renaissance had not happened yet. Whiskey was still, mm. up until almost five, ten years ago, so we were on the cusp with this line, it was still your grandpa's drink. The 90s was the vodka revolution. So we were still on the tail end of that. So if you look, it's all... Sky vodka and the blue bottles and blah blah blah. There was almost nothing brown. There was scotch because old dudes drink Johnny Walker red, but and blue if you've got money. But um, it was a lot of vodka stuff. So the vodka cranberry, everybody had vodka drinks except for Gosling, who was huh. doing an old hmm. fashioned because he's classy. I and like I, I really yeah. liked that touch. That's a, I guess, uh, here drink nerd yeah before we get too far from the beginning because like ryan gosling and emma stone storyline kind of starts out because he comes up goes up to her and her friend and hits on her in the bar and is like you know you're incredibly sexy can't take my eyes off you and this whole movie there's all these references to how hot and sexy emma stone is now i think she's attractive but i wanted to ask you fellas like is she (laughs) like she's not an out of 10 out of ten, I feel like she's not a conventional sexy woman. I'm like she's attractive. Everybody, everybody she has Google. a certain everybody charm, Google. but I do think like, Ryan feels like he wouldn't be attracted to her, right? In, like in any real situation. Like all uh, the I other women pairing, watching, they have all this on-screen chemistry for sure. Oh yeah, but watching yeah, La La Land before a, this kind of a, made it easier to see them two together. It's funny too yeah. that we're we're two movies in a row where Emma Stone just realizes the guy she's with is a boring so, yeah. and then she gets Ryan Gosling just like yeah. and I goes mean, Ryan Gosling yeah. both times. Not a hard choice. Like hello, Emma Stone has like that girl next door kind of quality. Yeah, yes. They just keep talking yeah. about how sexy she is, and I'm like, she's not like she's. I don't know that she's. Cute. What would you give her out of ten? Yeah, she's, she's sexy PG. To me. Uh, what would you give her out of ten? Seven. Oh God, it's Nick. Good. Eight. At she's least. not your type. I'd say eight and a half. Nine. Really? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Especially Interesting. not to be Dan Harmon as a redhead. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never heard you talk about redhead. I, I liked her with her dark like... hair in Zombieland. Yeah, and she's done but like I think I just like darker platinum hair. blonde, okay. too, and that's, that's okay as well. No, I like Emma Stone. She's cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's Gwen Stacy. Yeah, okay, maybe that would be better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I think she's I think she looks better fine. as a redhead. Yeah. The blonde washes her out, although she is a natural blonde. She's, really pale, <laughs> She's a natural She's blonde. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, Which I, just feels I was wrong. Once. I was and a natural head, Emily. But... No, yeah, Emma Stone's great. Anyways, okay, I just no wanted qualms. to ask. Mm. I think she's definitely very attractive. I just am like, I don't know. I didn't know she was that attractive. Yeah, I mean... Well, Ryan's I, also kind of weird looking, too. His eyes are really small and close together. Yeah. He looks like a... Like an alligator or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know how alligators, alligator. they got that big old head and then the two little eyes on top? <laughs> Ryan Gosling. No. Looks like alligator. Uh, oh, my God. But he's got that <laughs> wry, knowing smile, that little smirk that always gonna, yeah, okay, seals the deal. It's old as time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was almost beast, apparently. We talked about last week. That's so Ugh, funny. I think just nobody Ugh. should be that. Um, I'm mad at Dan Stevens for taking that role because it means he had to leave Downton Abbey and I'll... Never let mm. it go. Oh, you wanted to talk about bars because a lot of this. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot of this of movie first act, centers on a bar. First and second act, especially Cal's storyline, centers around a bar. And Which, it being at the same bar is a little ridiculous. It was a bit much, it's but like, if I guess in our town, I've got two and a half that I will regularly frequent. <laughs> but this was L.A. right? I don't know. Or where was this? I don't know. What? I think it was LA. Well, I think I think somebody makes a reference to LA at some point. It looked vaguely Californian. So. Yeah, just yeah. a place. I bet cool bars are a dime. But you know, you got to gotta be everywhere. Yeah. Isn't the dream to be a regular at a place though? Yes. Isn't it? Yeah, isn't but if, your that, dream if you're to doing be... the same game every day at the same bar, it's like you would think at some point well, your the, fishing oh, spot this, needs to be. The retort around, to like... that is your own comment. It's LA. Mm, yeah. They're coming through. Are they not? True. Yeah, I guess it is good to have like a home base. It's like a travel town. 
Well, I don't and, know. I don't know, but I don't know about y'all, but the dream for me, I think the, I think they call this alcoholism, but would be to walk <laughs> into a bar and have the cheers treatment where everyone's like, no, and everybody yeah. knows your name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so maybe that's, yeah. I don't know, maybe the water's got lots of blood in it at, at that one, so that's why he frequents it. Maybe. Um, yeah. But so we were talking pre-show and we paused because... Uh, Daniel's like, there's a bar in this movie, idiot. We can use this for the show. So uh, I didn't realize <laughs> the content. I didn't realize that I had bar mannerisms. I don't go out to drink a whole lot um, because I'm an introvert and I just buy beer and I bring it here. <laughs> uh, it's cheaper and you know I have my core drinks I like. So what I do is simply keep those drink ingredients them. around and make mm-hmm. them at the house, where I know like I make the best gin and tonic for me because bars have shitty cheap tonic and they don't give you enough lime. So, you know, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm more of a make a cocktail and play Fallout 4 at my house kind of guy than a go out. And plus, I'm horrified of drinking and driving. And we don't live in a walkable city. Carl does. Yeah. Um, he steps away from Jack Brown's, but it's broken parking lot currently. Yeah. affect him, though. He's stepping up yeah. in, the, in the Chelsea's and getting it. Actually, it's good for me. I'm like, oh, it's not going to be so crowded. But I didn't realize that <laughs> I had bar mannerisms. I didn't really so. recognize it, but I have my own ways. I get a bar's attention. I have places in a bar that I prefer to sit, no matter what the bar is. And mm. I didn't realize this until we were in San Francisco, hence my hat. But actually, not hence my hat. Really quick, I want to mention that Willie Mays passed away yesterday, one of the greatest legends of our game and certainly the best center fielder of all time. Um we're not a sports show. Nobody here cares about sports other than me, but I'm pretty bummed out that Willie Mays is gone. One of our uh, re- Mount Rushmore of baseball has mm. left us. He's up there with Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, and for me, the fourth is up for debate. But mm. I want you to know when I saw that he passed away, I went, that's weird. I thought he died forever ago. Nope. Yeah. Like Billy Mays? Billy because Billy. I thought he it was Billy Mays. Mays. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said too. I was like, he died? I was like, no, he died like a decade ago. <laughs> no, not the cocaine-fueled oxy cleaning <laughs> salesman. Guy. No, oh, the, the, the 23-time All-Star uh, Hall of Famer, <laughs> Willie Mays. Um, Same thing. What were we talking about? Oh, bars. bars. So we went to San Francisco, mm. and I brought you into a couple bars. Mm-hmm. And you were more awkward than me in those situations, and that was very jarring to me. Usually, yeah, uh, Cameron's the awkward one. In bars, I feel like I don't belong. I don't like it. I feel mm. like I'm not cool enough. I feel like my outfit's not cool. I feel like they're like, Ugh, who's this girl? Like, don't be at our bar. <laughs> like, are you going to order a drink? Your drink order is like you for also don't, sissies. You also don't like, have your go-tos quite No, yet. I don't. You kind of have one mm. now on a French 75, but with that, you have to make sure they have Prosecco. Yeah, it's kind of, I feel um, like it's another fussy oh, yeah. drink. Like, if I order that, yeah. it's like... Like, oh, you're being All the drinks extra. I like. Well, the paper yeah, plane's Yeah, it's like fuzzy. they can't make them. Last word also. Those are like the only two drinks I really do like, and it's like nobody can make them. Yeah, probably. and both of those, like the paper plane and the last word, both have a hard yeah. ingredient to come by, chartreuse and Amar Nonino, yeah. which isn't that yeah. hard, but not a lot of bars have it. So now, I, I don't know. I have my things I do when I walk in a bar. The first thing I do is I do a scan of the environment. I want to see how busy is it. Um, what's the general vibe? You can normally like look at the decor of a bar and know, okay, this is going to be like, I'm going to actually be able to get a good cocktail here, or this is going to be, I'm going to get a beer and a Fernet Branca and just, that's where I'm going to be at. Uh, I'd take a big sniff. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm like, he's a sniff in a bar. Um, and <laughs> take a big my sniff. preferred seat is at the end of a bar. Mm. I hate being in the middle. I want to be on the edge for some reason. Huh. So the middle on a plane at the edge of a bar. I want to be aisle on a plane or middle. Aisle on I plane. I never okay. want to be window, and I want to be at the end of a bar, whichever okay. end. Um, so that's consistent with the edge. There. Yeah. So hmm. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's... I think part of it is I don't want to have strangers on both sides. I think is a huge part of it. I want to have preferably mm. a gap and then me. Nobody wants to sit at the end, so I do. But like you um, walked into... Our last night, we did a pirate bar in San Francisco. I think we've talked about it briefly on the show. Mm-hmm. Maybe we cut it out. So I, I don't go over the whole thing. But the first thing we did is it was dark in there and it was light outside. And her eyes took 45 see. minutes it to adjust. It was so <laughs> dark. And I was like, I don't know where to go. And I was kind of like, do you want to be upstairs or downstairs? Blah, blah, blah. And you were like, I can't see right now. So make a decision. <laughs> and there were two see. stools open at the end of the bar. So we sat down right there. It was a rum bar because it was piratey pirates i didn't i'm not a big rum guy so i just dove into the menu and what i start looking for is ingredients that i recognize which is quite mm. a bit mm. as kind of it was a, tiki drinks t- right 
Okay. Tiki adjacent, yeah. Like it, okay. it wasn't full on like Tipsy Skipper, like our local bar mm-hmm. here. It wasn't as much like thematic stuff. It was more of here is a six page long like dictionary of too t- many classic rum drinks. drinks to it choose was from. too many. It was too many. It's yeah. like when you go to a sushi place. It's like at some point it all sounds like the same yeah. thing. It's yeah. like you're listing the same ingredients in you different know what? orders. It, I don't know what I'm. Show me a picture. It <laughs> was like, a, it was a lot like that. Down mm. to like hand roll versus specialty roll versus nigiri. Mm-hmm. Like they had their their rum drinks organized by like classic riffs on classics and like mm. whatever. Uh, and you had decision paralysis because of all of that. It was too much to look at. And it's the rare, 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 just the rarest instance where you were not comfortable asking a stranger for something. And I was just like, she likes sweet drinks that aren't very strong. And then he asked you two <laughs> follow-ups and he gave you two drinks you liked a lot. Yep. Mm. So all you have to nice. do is talk to the guy. Um, Scary. But what's your car? What's your move? What do you do? What's your I, bar behavior? Well, I don't know if I have moves so much as just like plans, I guess, because like it's like I, I could not pick a spot. Like the bars here get so crowded so fast that like if I get a spot, that's thrilling. You know what I mean? Because it's just like they're yeah. it's just impossible. The You're real estate's crazy. For those listening. Yeah. Um, so like the only actual cool move I had was when you guys were in town and we were at Nudie's and I just went like that and like had just my finger, finger up, up and like, yeah. And then like she came over and I was like, holy shit, that worked. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even know what I was doing, but yeah, I'm like, I struggle to get drinks still. Like I need, I need tips. Like I'm doing terrible. I've, I've like, it got so bad. I was like, I need to make an app that like you can just order on your phone and then the, it's like the bartender has it. <laughs> I can just like find you and give you the drink, but it's like, it's just hard to get their attention out here. It's like, you have to be like yelling or standing on your seat. Like it's, it's tough, but yeah, I, don't I, really do, have I do moves. the finger raise. That's my yeah. move. But uh, there's a couple things. My, like, yeah, my strategy is just like go when it's not busy. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the only that's thing you can one. guarantee. Yeah, I have a but couple. I do like to sit. If I can choose, I like to sit like in front of the bartender so like I can get drinks easier gotcha. that way. Yeah, um, if I, have I had a, a choice. I have a couple moves that help me a little bit. So um, when I get my drink, I the first thing I do, I take a sip. Obviously, I look up the next thing I want to order whether it's another mm-hmm. one of those or do I want to pivot to a beer or whatever. So I always have my next thing in mind. I always, when I'm done, scoot the glass to the edge so that they know oh, yeah. to pick it up. And that is a huge signal of then mm. you often get the, do you want another question? Yeah. If not, I do hard eye contact. So I will just stare <laughs> at them in the face. And then as soon as they make a whisk of eye contact at me, I do the, the finger raise. Mm-hmm. Um, I do the slide to the edge and I also tap tap. That's good. That's like a, it just as like, okay, it's done. Mm, like I finished mm. it. Like that's a nice send off for yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not nice a, a consummate off. professional, but that's, that. <laughs> that's just what I do. I'm not a real drinker. I just, once a, once a month, Dan will message me, you want to go downtown? And then I, I go downtown. <laughs> and then he goes downtown. <laughs> and then you pick me up. Yep. Because <laughs> I'm not playing that game. Safety first. <laughs> um, <laughs> There was a line in this movie about uh, how Emily, not Emily, who's Emma Watson's Emma, Emma Stones, Stones. Hannah, uh, Hannah, Hannah, uh, Hannah Banana. Yeah, the name Hannah's. <laughs> nah. I don't like that name. Sorry um, if any Hannahs are listening. I'm not sorry. Hannah, uh, she apparently has a crush on Conan O'Brien, and that's a bad thing. He's, he's a, not. He's a weird looking dude. Yeah. I think he's groovy. He's some though. For he's her cool to like hairstyle. Conan, and not immediately like. Yeah. Jake. I don't know. I wrote down. Jacob. I wrote Jacob. down who wouldn't do Conan O'Brien in my name. Me? I wouldn't <laughs> want to do Conan O'Brien. In. Didn't he? Wasn't he married to or dated? Uh, I almost called her Liz Lemon. Tina Fey. Oh, I know. Were they in I a have no idea. Comedy I'm not power sure. couple. That'd be cool. Beep, beep, beep. Maybe I made that up. It's probably in my mind. It's the absolute truth now. <laughs> yeah. So, what that's worth. <laughs> Uh, and now Cranberry. I think she's married to like a guy who's like five feet tall. He's like shorter than she is. So that's kind of <laughs> full. <laughs> she's like, I don't care. I don't like tall guys, I guess. <laughs> hey, short kings need love too. Yeah, short right. kings need love too. Shout out to being 5'10 and average. Daniel Radcliffe, Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> average. Um, <sighs> you know what was a surprise? What? Josh Groban being in this <laughs> movie. We got another musical cameo in this movie. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the opening song was... Um, John Legend. Um, John, John Legend. Legend. I don't remember. <laughs> on, I don't remember Josh Groban in this movie. He he's was. The, he's Hannah's the lawyer other dude, guy. The lawyer. 
that the cheese was ball. Him. That's Josh Groban. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cheese ball. Yeah. I think I just I human think my valium. Brain, they called him. Yeah. I think my yeah. brain saw his character and just went loser, and yeah. I didn't look at his face at all. Pretty much. I never, Josh Groban. I never. Uh, He's got a very he punchable like. face. Yes. I just didn't I didn't care about him at all. <laughs> Which is <laughs> poor Josh. Neither did Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, no, the makeover montage. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's maybe exactly my what I want. That was fun. Favorite yeah. part of the movie. I want to move into so Cal and Jacob like meet. They have that whole <laughs> bit we talked about where you know you're harsh and you're ruining my bar. Basically, mm. I got to fix this man. Everybody knows who David Lindhoff is now, or whatever his name is. Lindhagen. Lindhagen. Uh, David Hasselhoff. Um, so that whole thing happens, and then we get a, a fix me montage essentially. That's so funny. It's a good 10, 15 minutes of, you know, shopping malls and your wallet's gross and your hair's terrible and your shoes are awful and you need to be wearing suits and you be need Be better layers. than the gap. Fashion is present in layering, blah, blah, blah. It's all very great. He throws Haircut. His, throws his shoes off a balcony and <laughs> hits a woman. You could have hit someone. Um, and it's great. Try to ask you a question. Um, are you in a frat? Are you in a fraternity? Are you Steve Jobs? <laughs> <laughs> no reason to be wearing New Balance sneakers ever. I don't buy that uh, Jacob eats pizza. I don't no, buy that. No, I have the you same thought. With pizza? the physique he's no got, I don't think he's eating pizza or cereal or whatever else, burgers at the bar. I what think would that you, what would you, you don't... What's his diet to you? He, I feel like he's probably doing Steak? protein shakes and... yeah, probably. Well, I just feel like he's eating healthier than that. I feel like he's... But well, maybe he's still got his Is metabolism. Is he just working out a lot, maybe? I guess so. Maybe he... He doesn't work, right? He just has an inheritance and he just, I guess, exercises. I that was so my thing. Like, women. How on earth? Especially when we saw his house. It's the inheritance thing. They, yeah. They explain it. Yeah. He's like, that's how I'm able to afford all this. But if he's not working, how's he... That's gonna I go feel like he's also point. working. It's just not a point we're worried about. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. He's got to be. Got to have a job, right? I don't right? know. I don't know. It depends on how big your inheritance That's is. That's true. If he's got a couple hundred milli, he's chilling. Well, he's if, chilling. Well, if Hannah becomes a lawyer, he won't have to work either. That's he, true. He's married rich. Yeah. yeah. House husband. He can be a stay-at-home true. dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you have something specific you want to talk about with the montage or just how awesome it is? Not necessarily. Just how awesome <laughs> it is. I think it's hilarious. All the face slapping. All the face slapping. All the slapping was great. <laughs> yeah. And then when the slapping turned on its head at the end of the movie, it was super cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice nice conclusion there. Yeah. Um, oh. So I want to pose a question or a thought. I'm interested <laughs> in if you had to assign a blame majority on the Cal-Emily marriage breakdown. Mm. This is a hard question. That's a hard question. It'll come out with all of us getting canceled. But because, <laughs> like, is, who do we put more of the blame on? I don't. Right? Like, and I don't mm. think that's like brilliant. Well, and I wouldn't do it in real life. I'm only doing it for yeah. sport uh, and yeah. for the point of conversation. But like, be. I mean, cheating isn't a good thing. But she wouldn't have cheated if. Cal had been more present, probably. But then there's so it's, no like, you can't... communication on her end of the lack of presence. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess if also, I had to pick, it's probably her for cheating, but, yeah. Like, it seems like you would have brought it up before you went there. But maybe she did, and maybe he she did, and he, he was just receptive. Maybe anything. he was well, as receptive. Well, because we see how he reacts to it. Exactly. He, he doesn't, yeah, he, he, he's avoidant. So, exactly. Yeah, he shuts it was, down. So maybe he just shut We don't know down. how many, yeah, what effort she put in before, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we know enough. To be fair. And I think that that actually serves in the movie's favor because you mm, yeah. it doesn't make you hate either character. Um, no. Like, I don't think the movie has a supervillain. There, there are communication breakdowns, yeah. understandings, but there's not the real, like, dick move or abusiveness. Yeah. Because um, it, it could be really easy to hate Cal, but I think they dogpile so much onto him in the very beginning that it's kind of like inside Lewin Davis where you kind of root for him and sympathize with him. You feel bad him. for him, but you don't Because, really... like, he loses his best friend. Like uh, Richard, what was the guy's name that got him the yeah, cologne? Yeah. He gets cheated on, he loses him, and then he gets with uh, Jacob, but then he loses Jacob too. And loses then he has Jacob the whole nudes thing happen. So and then, then Robbie hates him. So he's all these things pile on, and you're like, oh, I kinda, you kind of root for him. So you then kinda, what in the really writing makes us not like root for him, but also not hate Emily? Well, it's because very relatable in a lot of ways. Like a lot of people have, you know, marriage. I mean... It's is a common it thing. The, yeah. You get comfortable, you become think, roommates, yeah. and then is it the quality of the both well, maybe sides just because we root. Well, I don't know, but like we root so much for him, and we're like, well, if they married, so like then she must be, you know, if we like him, then we must like her too, just because they're on the same team, kind of. Like maybe it's well, one she, of those she's things. She's apologetic seeming. Like she almost immediately is apologetic too. 
Yeah. Almost mm. immediately, right. You know, that whole scene where he's going and, like, sneaking over and taking care of the yard. Yeah. And she <laughs> calls yeah. him yeah. So just because she wants to hear his voice. And the but. Mm. He only knows that because he's there watching. That scene just makes me like I'm always like, that's so sweet that he's like watching creepy, her be like, she misses me and she loves me, you know? So and that's just when him he with like the nails the whole... on his feet, just like doing the yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Genius, by the way. Aerating Genius. the yard with nail shoes. Pretty cool. <laughs> so good. Also love that that's uh, how much he cares about the yard. It's great. Yeah. He's an American dad. He's worried about, you know, his yard and his new balance. I can't wait to care about a yard one day. I'm going to have the best yard. Hey, I've, I've had a yard, yard for yeah. almost seven years. I don't give a shit about my yard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Other people are paid to take care of it. And uh, That's nice. when something happens, like a limb falls in it, I'm like, oh, like, I just don't. <laughs> I don't care. Although right now there's a strip of grass where it's like we haven't had rain in a while here. Uh, there's a strip of my grass where there's no tree to like shade it. So it's like pretty brown and i've been like watering it with a watering can every night <laughs> so maybe can. i do kind of a little bit care about my hair you care a little bit every um, so often you get a wild hair and decide to weed whack a wild hair. <laughs> <laughs> i do need to weed eat the uh, weeds up against uh, the fence because i guess the lawn people are like there's bushes there i can't possibly weed eat around the bushes that is no too they don't they just weed eat around <laughs> the concrete yeah they're tools mm. and they crash their lawnmower into my fence and my lanai oh yeah, they did. They do gashed that. my lanai. First world mm, problems. Soon. <laughs> First world problems. Also, mm-hmm. privilege because I have a lanai mm-hmm. that can get gouged. Yeah. Um. We also have so there's obviously we have two adult relationships. We have uh, Jacob and Hannah, and we have Cal and Emily, and that whole deal. But we also have the teenage one. We have the <laughs> son whose name is Robbie, Robbie, Robbie and Jessica, and Jessica who's seventeen but has a crush on Cal. And but Robbie Ooh. is thirteen, and that's a lot of weird pairings Jessica. in this movie. Yep. Yeah, like every relationship is kind of a bad pairing, except for like uh, Hannah's and Jacob's. Yeah. And also, like, I don't want to jump to the end of the movie, but the end is gross. It's, it's gross. Yeah, that's one of my complaints. Is like, why would she throughout the what? entire movie she expresses that she's very uncomfortable with his oh. advances, and then she just turns and gives him the nudes, and I'm yeah, like, that okay, was which gross. now he's in possession. Of child pornography. <laughs> but he's a child. Go. He's a child. Uh, yeah, but I guess he has four years to use them and then get rid of them. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. That's a weird. I <laughs> guess I don't. Yeah. Know. Can you have child? Can you have that though? If you're a child yourself. I but she turns eighteen know. next year, so then it's like then an it's adult is giving her photos. You know yeah, what? I don't know. That's, that's a weird mm. one. Yeah. It's a weird note to it end also, the it's movie a weird on. Note to end on. Yes. <laughs> And like, be like seemed, happy. This yeah. movie literally ends with her handing this 13 year old boy her 17 year old nudie pictures and then credits. And it, we're they, supposed to just be like, what a yeah. good film. I they mean, did it I right with Barbie way. and the gynecology. Like, that's a good ending like that, you I know. But like, this seemed like it was trying to do that <laughs> and it didn't quite land. Yeah. They should have there ended were, it with his, him be her. A bit, 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 bit. I mean, like, I'll come for you then. Like, you love my dad. Like, I'll look like him in a bit, and I'll come for you. That would have been good. That's that would have been great. cute. Like, you know. But he, no, he, he went. For a second, like I thought the shark with a lot of the ending. Yeah. For a second, I thought he I was going to open so. the envelope and it be something else. Literally anything else. Nope. Just those. Just yep. Yep. He, just the worst. Yeah, I don't. They're a little cringy. His whole Scarlet yeah. Letter thing, like in the yeah, you know, it's, it's, his it's whole asshole. character seems kind of conflicted to me because he's got this emotional intelligence to sympathize with his dad and his mom. They're always like, "How old are you?" But then he's got this like stupid, like he keeps chasing this girl that's obviously not into it and tells him to stop. I, I just want and you to like, know, I think so. about you every time I do it. <laughs> yeah, wild. Yeah. So I mean, I guess that's just horny teenager shit. But you know, it's still just like, how is he? I don't know. I guess that's character. I couldn't tell growth, if, but I don't know. I couldn't tell if that uh, third, that part of the movie, uh, which is like, it's very small in comparison to the other two. Um, I couldn't tell if it was a little rough and was the lowest point of the film, like every scene we had with the son and the 17 year old babysitter, <laughs> mm-hmm. or if I just am so, I just hate teen angst so much I that I rejected it. And I'm just like, <laughs> It got very repetitive towards the end, but I didn't feel like it was a low point. Like, I enjoyed the the humor of it. 
I don't know. I well, guess it did funny. set us up for the whole brawl in the backyard scene. Dude, like, I guess I, I like that a he lot. He doesn't even know like, about the naked photos. <laughs> the what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Which, <laughs> by the way, I had seen yeah. that scene on TikTok. Mm. So I had not only that crescendo of the film room for me. Which makes me so sad. But more importantly, I knew for the entire film oh. that Hannah was Cal's daughter. That I was oh. such did a you, good surprise. I was about to say, what did you think? Because you love twists. I did not see it coming yes. at all. It was so good. I knew for the whole movie. And it was movie. so quick. It was just like, boom, she's there. Boom, he's there. And like, it was great. The double, Ryan Bilba. Gosling's double take, like, yeah. Bit Where are you here? Are you yeah, when she calls, calls him daddy, what he's like, don't call her that. No, he, don't call she him calls him yeah. daddy. Yeah. 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 He's like, no. Please um, stop calling him that. <laughs> that the, the scenes where they're seeing each other for the first time in the backyard, absolute classic Ryan, Ryan Gosling. face, where he's like... Yeah, mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. physical acting is so good. Mm-hmm. Just the... He's I, a I don't really feel good, good right actor. Now. Yeah. He's got range, man. He's a really good actor. And I think that that was proven to me when we saw Barbie... Because everybody in that movie is fantastic because you can't have a bad single cast member in that film or the whole movie doesn't work. Yeah. Um, because it's so ridiculous. Also, the direction. I mean, holy cow. What was the... Remind me of the director. Greta name. Gerwig. Greta Gerwig mm-hmm. is a genius. She's great. Uh, and I'll watch anything she makes now. But Oh, man. They should have had Kumail be a kid in that. Oh, that would have been funny. Man. Wasn't he supposed to be, or am I thinking of something I'm not else? Sure. Kumail, a kid in what? A, a, a Ken. Ken. Oh. In Barbie. Yep. That would have been really good. Oh, well. Uh, oh, well. Alas. And maybe in the sequel, that's going to probably ruin it. I know. <laughs> oh, no. Just leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. It was perfect. It was a uh, moment. You won't recapture it. You just won't. I wrote down, no. uh, this movie seems like it's going to go the angle of marriage doesn't work at the outset, but I think it ends with a marriage is hard, but it can work at the end. Yeah, um, it can yeah, work I, I and it's like, worth it. I don't know if that's as good as like with the ending in La La Land when they're not together, that's a better ending. Oh, I feel like, yes. I don't know if that's yeah. if I it's think that, better or not for this one. I think that La La Land ending with a tragic parting of ways is better storytelling. More artistic and better, more realized. Yeah, but rom-coms aren't art, are they? They're junk food movies. No, <laughs> they're, 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 they're I, I guess my chips. problem is that this movie kind of sets it up like we're not your typical rom-com and it's like kind of subverting things and even winking at like when, uh, like it rains on Steve Carell and he goes, what a so cliche. cliche. There's like, they're knowing, yeah, it's like a self-aware movie. But then it like at the very end, it's like, ah, just kidding. They're going to get together. The dad's going to approve it. He, she's going to give him the news and all this stuff it's is going to very... work out. We're going to give you everything you wanted at the end. And I was like, I guess that's satisfying, but it doesn't feel as satisfying. It's a very no, mean girls ending. Like, you know what I mean? Like nope. it's it's once again, nope. it's 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 junk food shallow. Oh. You know, mm. the whole meeting and then once her face gets hit by the bus and you're like, finally she gets her just desserts. <laughs> yeah. and I don't know. Yeah. The way that these movies of this era mm. um at the end really quickly tie everything up and then go, Great, there's a bow and scene. Yeah. Like uh, I just, don't really it felt love rushed, that. I guess. It kind of feels like uh these writers are writing themselves into a corner kind of because the goal obviously is to make it funny. Uh, and when I you're I feel like it was like studio interference or something like they were like no we don't like that ending and they like, made it change or something no i'm not because against this the happy isn't, ending yeah because this is, doesn't have the like artisticness and meaning of what the parting of ways on la la land does like if cal and emily ended up divorced like what what lesson have we learned what what's the meaning it's just like all right what, well what you lesson? cheated on me and so we oh, gave up our marriage cheat. They should do a you crazy know? stupid love too, and have them be married, and then they get divorced and have to make it work. I and don't just, think that. And then oh. Austin Butler's the guy that helps Ryan get back in. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that this movie having a, a, a somewhat vapid, if you will, ending mm. is a knock because it's rom coms. Yeah, I mean, yeah. think of the ending of You've Got Mail. In. Sanity. Yeah. That ending yeah. Makes don't cry, no. shop girl. Don't cry, shop girl. I only ruined your entire business and we're glossing yeah. over that. Yeah. Like that ending is crazy. But yeah. the point of rom coms is that you go, yay, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And there don't yeah. that, I think that, that <laughs> right. as a medium, as a film medium, film as an art is worse than a more uh, uh, thought-provoking ending like La La Land or like Inside Lewin Davis, a movie where mm. nothing good happens to this character, and it just leaves you going... Or if it is good, it comes back later to be not good. Right. Like it's, yeah. That is more engaging as a story, but you don't watch rom-coms to... 
think. So, yeah, no. They're right. junk you wanna, food You want to laugh? You want to have a good time? And I want more junk food movies. <laughs> And we try to do junk food movies like The Fall Guy, and they flop. Oh, and now, Fall Guy now, was great. Now you're able to rent that for thirty dollars to try to recoup. Yeah, uh, theater costs because no one goes to the theater anymore. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Streaming has one, killed everything. Yeah. But yeah, one part I like about like as we move towards the end of the movie is after the whole like you know backyard scene happens and everything's falling apart. One thing that doesn't fall apart is the relationship of Hannah and Jacob. I feel yeah. like it's a trope mm. of like, oh, this is too much drama. Your dad hates me. Like, I'm going to break up with you. But he's Jeez. he is locked in. He is yeah. like supportive. He's, he's like, even, call yeah. your dad. Like, yeah. fix things. Like, so I love mm-hmm. that there's no drama between the two of them because they're soulmates. And that's it. definitely he's, because he's got the daddy issues. Well, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's fun because Cal, like, I guess on the surface level, you're like, oh, Cal goes through the hero's journey because he's the one that starts out destitute and blah, 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 and actually changes and, and realizes that. Uh, but what did he realize? I love my wife still, and I always kind of did. She broke my heart, not the other well, way around. Well, he realized he needed to fight for her day but to day, he every not day. jumped out of the car. But the real hero's journey for me is actually Jacob, who goes mm-hmm. from womanizing, mm-hmm. you know, different girl every night player to... Oh, nope. I've actually realized that this is what I want. I'm going to grow mm-hmm. up and commit to a real yeah. relationship. He opens up, like it's said in the very beginning of the movie, like, oh, you, I never talk about me. Mm-hmm. You always get mm-hmm. them to talk about themselves because yeah. they like that. It's like the Toby Keith song I want to talk about. Yeah, he me. even asked her, um, would you do me a personal favor and ask me a, or ask me a personal question or something? It was right. like, he had to, yeah. Yeah, he mm-hmm. says he's trying to buy this, happiness. He's not happy. Yeah. And then he finds happiness. This movie right. does a really good job with like character development because almost every character kind of starts at one point and almost does a complete 180. And I just want to note, huh. like, you know, uh, Hannah has one too. She just discovers she mm-hmm. doesn't want the safe relationship she, yeah. uh, with the lawyer guy and he bummed her out because yeah. his big moment was not proposing to her, but rather you want to be partner at the whatever, dumb, bad. But I, <laughs> How I about feel that, like huh? <laughs> I just don't, so I think it's a, maybe a little understated the Jacob <laughs> journey. Mm-hmm. He that That story is in the shadow of uh, mm-hmm. Cal and Emily, and I think it's almost shows more growth. It almost, yeah, it's like an inverse reflection of what he's going through. Uh, yeah, like that's. <laughs> I feel like that's a harder shift to me than we learned how to communicate. <laughs> Which you should think <laughs> after like twenty years of marriage, you guys would have figured that. Yeah, out. I mean, what's like, the come one on, thing man. that everybody tells you when you get married? Communicate. communicate. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't do it because no, a lot of people get divorced. Stupid. So, <laughs> I mean, if you're listening to this. Communicate with your spouse. Let them know how you're feeling. We don't get divorced. But we've been doing a pretty good job. It's also been seven years. Yeah. It's not. <gasps> Let's short, go. It's not a short amount of time. No, we're not newlyweds. People called us newlyweds for like five years, and I used to get really mad at that because I was like, "We're not newlyweds anymore. It's been five years." Yeah, we lasted longer than your first marriage, Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> we don't Cheryl. know anybody named Cheryl. This is a made-up point. <laughs> <laughs> Also, if, but if your marriage has lasted less long than mine, get wrecked, you stupid <laughs> <laughs> oh, loser, man. dude, oh. loser, loser. Um, wow. But yeah, that's really all the notes I had. I think uh, I actually read Roger Ebert's review of this movie because he hadn't uh, tragically passed yet. And he mm. was also very fair. He gave it a three stars out of five, which for a rom com, I feel like if you land Pretty three good. stars, you nailed it. No, yeah. because you know, rom coms are the pop music of the movie industry. How does this compare to the other rom coms we've watched for you guys? Um, did, well, did he have any other like notes for the movie, or just kind of the star rating? It was a lot of like. He really went all in on Ryan Gosling being a great actor. Mm. He's like, I've seen him play mm. dramatic roles. I've seen him play comedy roles. I've seen him play it all. And he's excellent in everything. He talked about his physical comedy. It's a good review. He also talked mm. about how, um, kind of like what I was saying um, about there's no supervillain. Like, the relationships are pretty grounded for a rom com. Um, he had a lot of good things to say. I guess, like, the knock you could give it is that it's vapid, but so is every rom com. So. Um, yeah. I also love Steve Carell because it comes with a genre. S- Steve Carell's He's great. Hilarious. I mean, it's the golden era of Steve Carell. So many you know? just noises they, and yeah, expressions. They, well, he left the office. They like typecasted movies, this like. movie perfectly oh, because you get you like see... the cool Ryan. Go ahead. No, you. Uh, yeah, it was dumb. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna <laughs> say. Did you see at the beginning of the movie, we're in Emily's office, and her plaque on her desk has her name, and then underneath it, it says, uh, "Read." 
Read. It's okay. So, sorry, I lost. I got Reed. a lot of a lot of notes here. You interrupted me with that. Shut up! <laughs> this is a good fact, and you guys are gonna love it. At the bottom of her nameplate, it says her name, and then it says associate to the vice president, which is a nod to oh, assistant to the regional funny. manager. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> All right, we that got was worth there. it. You got, got there eventually. There. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. I was just going to say that they like this movie kind of the backbone of it is like the typecasting, you know, with like Gosling, you get the handsome and charming kind of thing. Emma Stone has that like uh, woman next door and then Steve Carell is Michael Scott, but kind of a more grounded version. Yeah. Like, But they're it's, all playing into like their kind of typecasted expectations. It's got to be hard being Steve Carell because he is so typecastable. I mean, you think mm-hmm. of like Evan yeah. Almighty, he's kind of the same. Mm-hmm. If you 40 year old virgin was kind of dinner for felt like this for God's bit. sakes. Um, oh my God. Yeah, I that, that, one. One. that movie sucks. <laughs> What's that spy movie with him and Anne Hathaway? Uh, 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 get smart. Get smart. Oh my God. So good. That's so funny. But the rock was in that, right? The rock is yeah. The villain in it. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I forget oh, about that movie. He might have. Well, he does lose in that movie. Maybe that's when he put it in his contract. I could never lose. I'm big man. I can't lose. But I love that. <laughs> Me. <laughs> he kisses them and like to just. Dis- so good. I haven't seen Me that and Carl in were years. in LA on a at a work conference, and we saw the the like music building. The music building at the end of Get Smart. Oh, okay. Oh, just drawing a blank on the name of it, but I remember pointing out and Carl going, "Cool." <laughs> I'm like, no, it's the thing from the, the movie. movie. It's cool. The the interesting building we saw broke the whole matrix. Oh, that was the. Gosh. There was like that a building that had two sides night. at any point. It was, yeah, that was... <laughs> it's a building that looks too It looks like we got to the back of the Truman Show, and yeah, it was just painted yeah. on the wall. And I, both of our phones died, and we couldn't figure out how to get home for like an hour and a half. And <laughs> is that where you walked you got, around L.A.? Uh, is that where you got the Uber, and it took you to like the rich, rich part of L.A.? And you were like, we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> that was a different no. time. Yeah, we were somehow in the hills, and I was like, I don't think this is where we're supposed <laughs> no, to be. No, the, the Uber driver looked at us and went, you shouldn't be here. This can't like, oh, be yeah, right. So, yeah. We're going to finish what Manson <laughs> like, started. He's like, that's Aaron Paul's house. You don't look like you should be within 700 meters of Aaron Paul's house. Oh, um, uh, man. Man, yeah. Uh, good movie. Yeah. Well, you asked where, where would we How does this, it? yeah, how does this compare to other rom coms we've met? <sighs> we've watched. I just said I've only met. seen, what, You've Got Mail? You've Got Mail, uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, yeah. When Harry Met Sally. The Big Sick. Which one was Harry Met Sally? That was the... Billy Crystal. That one was... Crystal. Okay, yeah, Billy yeah. Crystal. Yeah. That movie was okay. I mean, this is probably my favorite, but I think it's... Ooh. Ten yeah, Things I, I, I Hate I, About I, You is my least favorite rom-com we've seen. That's my least favorite rom-com I think I've ever seen. That's like all teenagers. That movie was so a pain yeah, in my hate ass. I, hate, I really disliked that film. <laughs> You've um, Got Mail, I really liked, but because yay. it felt early 2000s. Mm-hmm. I love you. And like got aggressively mail, so. But the fact that they ignore the, the fact tech was so charming to see. Yeah. Like, but them ignoring like, that he destroyed her bookstore and they just gloss over it at the end. I refuse to get past that. It really That's bothers insane you. And it really bugs me because it's like they went, how do we write around this? And it's like, it's simple. We just freaking ignore just it. Ignore it. Dumb. <laughs> it I, never I happened. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. love that. I feel like that's lazy. Um, what's the other one? Harry Met Sally. That is uh, almost wholly unmemorable in my brain. Um, so that I just remember like that whatever. scene in the diner. Yeah, yeah like the diner is yeah. good. Yeah, the beginning of that movie, I hated every character, and then it ended, and I kind of still hated every character. So it can't be that one. Um, big sick. Big sick is my favorite rom. I just don't I consider that a rom com, really. but it's yeah. so modern that it doesn't mm. have that. Silly. I want to watch it again. That movie feels that indie. So much more grounded. Yeah. Right. It feels too real and not fantastical enough. Like how many rom coms are based on an actual story? You know, like Right. Mm. Um, so like my favorite rom coms, that one aside, are probably like again, the proposal, which is nothing in mm. that movie is believable at all. <laughs> no, that movie insane. is insane. <laughs> it's insane. Nothing it's in that movie can happen premise, in real yeah. life. And because of that, it's like you just like take your brain power and go pew and turn it all the way down. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, Ryan Reynolds very make me a happy time. Uh, <laughs> it's, like that's great. Betty White's in it, and she oh, like that's. Oh, okay. I, I'm not gonna spoil like the and Betty the White plot. But coach from the old show, Coach or whatever. Oh yeah, I don't I remember. Don't know. I can't remember his but, name. But like, I love the proposal. He plays a coach and everything. But no, this this movie would be up there. Okay, it's high up there. I don't. It think made it. you laugh on several times. Yeah. And I was like, yes. I, 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 I liked every introduction that Gosling got. They did some slow mo kind of music overlay thing that like Hot. felt like really out of place with the music. <laughs> but yeah, 
I really laughed good. the hardest at the end of the movie after the fight scene in the backyard and they're all sitting on the wall and he does the, the, the meme mm-hmm. where he's mm. covering his face and he laughs. I did not expect that high pitched laugh. And for some reason it got me and I was dying laughing between that and the, when he's like, Oh, you're whatever. And then he takes off his ring. He's like, okay. And David then David ladder. Punch, yeah. <laughs> so good. David leader. Hosen's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, leader. Ladder. Hosen's. <laughs> ladder. David Lynn. Hagen. Uh. Uh, David Hagen. David Hagen. David Hagen. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> In the show, right? There. <laughs> hey, no, that's it. Uh, we have to do hot points next. Mm. All right. I'm very well, excited for this one. <laughs> previously, I have stated that this is the hottest Ryan Gosling film that I have seen. Hot I think boss. I agree with you there. <sighs> I have a bit of a hard time though, because he's such a womanizer, mm-hmm. you know. So. But he learns. But he, he learns. He he's not a bad I know, dude I know, with I know. it though. He's what? He's not like a bad dude with it. He no. like listens to their problems and he opens it. He's, he he's a gentleman and yeah. womanizer. He kind of toes that line. He takes care of him. It seems. <laughs> he takes care of him. Yeah. Anyways, so. so yeah. good. But I had to reflect that in the hot points at least a little bit. So our first point is a minus one for the cheesy pickup lines. Mm. They're too cheesy. I'm sorry. It only you didn't works. Like his approach the bench and all that. No, <laughs> the bench was good. Too that cheesy. Was, I thought. Because I thought that good. stuff was good. It's more oh. clever than. Did it hurt? Dad, I when hurt. Did it hurt yeah. when you fell? I'll give him the approach to the bench, but he was doing other ones that I was like, no, no, too cheesy. His objection, leading the witness. I, yeah. I thought they were all really clever, but yeah. I, but we're men. Oh. We're dumb. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it only <laughs> works because he's hot. If he work. wasn't hot, yeah. you'd be like, what are you doing? It will go away. True. You know. I don't. I don't know. I think it would be good for different reasons. Like if Chris Farley did those same lines, <laughs> it'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would. That would be good. Well, anyways, our first point was a minus one because I had to reflect some there. You know, there's a little bit wrong there. We've already used all of our hot point music, but that's okay. So, but we quickly escalate from our minus one. So we get a plus one for a nice suit. There's a moment where he does a little swoosh and puts his suit yep. on. I was like, ooh, hot. <laughs> plus one. <laughs> Upside down push-ups? I mean, mm, come on. Yeah. The muscles. I like, can't do that. Hot. My little arms. It's mm. okay. It'll work. Plus one for every face he makes during the dirty dancing conversation. It's just the whole, like, he's sitting there, like, can I put my shirt back on? No. (laughs) You know, I bring dirty dancing into the conversation. So funny. Plus one. But then we get another plus one because Ryan Gosling can actually lift yeah. The mm. woman. He He's actually jacked. did that. He looks great. Mm. Yeah, I know, but that's hot. So. Yeah. He looks photoshopped. Which wasn't Emma Stone. No? It was, it was a stunt oh, really? double stunt because double? she has like trauma from <gasps> being like falling doing gymnastics or something. Uh, oh, no. She got the twisties. Oh, no. <laughs> the twisties. Trauma will do that to you, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyways, we got another plus one because he pulls off a, good, a man ring and a chain. Not every mm. man can pull off a man ring. I can't. Yeah. You Not know? every man. Not every man. Shh. Just, I'm stumbling over my words. Leave me alone. Anyways, our final Attack plus her. one, which mm. brings us to a 10. Nice. We, love oh. a man. we love a man who goes all in when he meets the right one. He's supportive. He's meeting the family. He's buying wine. He's saying, I love you. He's not afraid. Mm-hmm. He's all in. So anyways, brings us to a 10. Nice. And a crescendo. And a crescendo. Perfect. Opposite of a wow. crescendo. Decrescendo. Thank you. Uh, a uh, descendo? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Descendo. Sounds like a bad George Lucas Star Wars name. A Magneto? So he yeah. joins. He joins the 10 Club. Who's I had in the to have club one. You gotta get a picture of him on the wall. The t- obviously, Sundance Kid, the OG. Yep. Um, Heath, Le- Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Uh, Will Turner. Mm. Timmy mm. Chalamet. This is a pretty large club now. I know. Well, we've been, watching, we've been watching a lot of hot movies. What can I say? <laughs> Aragorn, I think, is probably, I think. Oh, I don't God, remember. Yes. But it has to be Aragorn. Shout out to Vigo. If I didn't put him in there, he's in there now because I say so. I was going to say we could have a Mount Rushmore, but now I think we need like a Last Supper of all I of know. <laughs> Ooh, once we get to a Last Supper, we'll start bumping. Like, Ooh. Ooh. Somebody has to leave the table. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> we can't have too many, you know? Mm. We should yeah. get like a really long 
like last supper port painting here, it just, and the, then, like, the table just keeps extending no no we, <laughs> we get the actual painting and then we get like sticky tape and we like take their heads mm-hmm. over the apostles i yeah. love it be great <laughs> That'd be fun. Daniel's Sundance. Jesus. No, Sundance Kid. <laughs> oh my Sundance God. Sundance Kid. Sundance Kid would be Jesus. Yeah. Danielle surrounded by our hot people. I don't know. I like that. Um, I don't really have anything else. Uh, I don't think. Hit, men hit men or miss? Oh, hit men or miss. I mean, that seems trivial. Uh, hit. It's a hit. Mm. I, I feel weird hit. calling hit this a hit be- next to like other movies we've called a hit for some reason. There's no. No, you can scale like. Scale or hit. Yeah. Here's the thing. My, like, my favorite food. Right now, probably is green Thai curry. I love green Thai curry. So good, mm. but it doesn't <laughs> mean really good. that like Oreos aren't perfect. All right, yeah. just one though. Just one though. Oreo, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Like there are hits of multiple calibers. Like, is mm. this even close to as good as The Godfather? No. <laughs> <laughs> But they're both hits because they're both good for what they are. The Godfather mm. is good at being the best movie ever made. And this is a good rom-com. And I th- I'm glad I th- you guys liked it. That's why the hit yeah. scale is a hit, mid, or miss scale. Because it's the scale changes based on whatever what we want. <laughs> based on what yeah, you, kinda, you have to assume the medium yeah. a little bit. Or the genre. It's like, yeah, like... It, is my favorite fit for an autopsy song, which is like my favorite band right now, as good as Yesterday? No. <laughs> <laughs> like the Beatles are the best band in the world ever. And they probably will be forever. But that doesn't mean that other bands can't have 10 out of 10 songs too. Just because they're worse than Blackbird. Um, but anyway, I digress. This is a good movie. So um, July. It brings us neatly to July. What did we watch last 4th of July? Was it National Treasure? Yes, it was. Yep. Oh. oh, yeah. We watched <laughs> National Treasure last time. So we're trying to do patriotic-ish movies as much as patriotism makes me want to blow my brains out uh, on the 4th of July. And we've chosen perhaps the best one of all that I've never seen. So next week we will be watching, for me, for the first time ever. Same for me. Independence Day. <gasps> oh. Carl, have you seen I, it? I th- I think I've only seen parts on TV. Whoa. So I'm excited, yeah. The rare Danielle has I seen it. I have seen it. I, this wow. was one my dad showed me back in the day when I was in high school. Because he it? was like, this is a good movie you got to watch. And I remember liking it in high school. You need to so. see this movie. Isn't our boy Goldblum in this one? <laughs> yes. Albeit so. probably not majorly. I, uh, I think he's like a good, like, he's not the main character, but he's a decent secondary character, I mm. think. Okay. I think. So, it's been a minute since I've seen it. Think and Will Smith. I think that'll come out mm. July 3rd or so, which is good, like right before Independence Day, so you can listen right to before. it. Right before. And then, and then uh, go, go have sakes. a hot dog, watch a firework. You know? Have a million beers and be hungover for work on Thursday because <laughs> I'm pretty sure the 4th <laughs> On is, Friday. No, it's Thursday. Thursday. Is it Thursday? It's a Thursday. Right, Thursday. Thank God we can keep our recording schedule intact, except for next week. We have to talk about that. So um independence day people and then i think we have a theme for july what was our theme creature features creature features Mm. so independence day is about aliens so we're just kind of running with that we're going to do some various other kind of creature films trying to keep it light and summary so nothing too uh, carl really wants to watch alien i also really want to watch alien but we're going to save alien for later in the year and we're going to blue ball carl for the next like four months (laughs) (laughs) i'm dying to watch that i've been like danielle's dying to not watch it i don't want to watch it doesn't want to watch it but i i will give you two pieces of information going into that movie and huge major spoilers that will make the movie fine for you uh yeah independence day i'm really stoked uh, I'm really stoked for the other movies in, in the month because they're all mm. fun. It's going to be a good month. It's going to be a fun, good month. We need a good, fun month because a lot of the movies have been dramas over the past 18 months, and yep. that's exhausting. So also, yep. 18 months we've done. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at us. We're still here. We're still here. Still doing it. Thanks, Yay. thanks, David, for listening. Thanks, to David. <laughs> <laughs> I hope one day we have like a oh, hundred thousand subscribers, and I'm still just talking to David as if he's thanks, the only audience member. But the it'll never happen. Do it. Who cares? Yeah. Whatever. Follow us on everything. Join our Discord. Uh, we talk about what have we been talking about? Food. Food. A lot of food talk. A lot of Broadway talk. Dishwashers. How to get the most out of your dishwasher. Follow for dishwasher tips and. And the wrestling like sports once every six month picture of Tyler. Yeah, the the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did not even know he was in the Discord. The biannual <laughs> Tyler thing, <laughs> yeah. where he makes a he's like actually in Utah a joke from twenty years he ago. Makes a reference. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get an it. actual ten year old work joke. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it would be, yeah. It was nine back or ten when I was years in office now. in the small room. Yeah, it's got to be eight, nine years old. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Halloween bit. I'm looking room. for Utah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Inside jokes no one will understand. So. Yep. All right, let's yep. end the show. Hey, Independence Day, happy fourth, whatever, whatever. Uh, we'll catch you all in the next one.